to see you today. My name is Duncan. Duncan Campbell. And it's so nice to be here in, I think it's Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. I am Duncan. Duncan Campbell. I am the man that was involved with part of the Hebrides revival of 1949 to 1952. Now, no man ever brings revival. You need to know that first of all. Revival happens when God's people pray. And secondly, everything you hear about the Hebrides revival, some of it has been exploded and, and, and uh, uh, evangelized a little bit too much. But there's a truth today, and 80% of the words that you will hear are from my autobiography on what God did when he came down into a little community named Bavis on the Isle of Lewis in the Hebrides Islands off of the coast of Scotland. Maybe you've never heard of the place before, but I hope today to share with you some church history that will encourage you and transform you and challenge you to be the people of God that he's called you to be. It all began with two older women have a few older folks in the room today. These two older ladies began the revival through prayer. Their name was Christine and Peggy Smith. One was 82 and one was 84. The 182 was totally blind and the 184 was so crippled with arthritis. But they were so, what should I say? heartbroken after World War II that so many people had left the church. It was a time of hilarity and the people were in the dance halls and in the, 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 the taverns and it seemed as if they did not have any time for church. I don't know what your day is like but has there ever been a day in which people didn't want to go to church? And such was the day in 1949 and these two older ladies began to pray and they said God rend the heavens and come down. We are thirsty. Pull out your spirit on a dry thirsty land. And they held on to a promise and they prayed over a Bible that would affect generations to come. Now as they began to pray, they prayed in their little cottage there in the little village of Barvis. And Scotland is a beautiful place as you can see some of the, the pictures. My homeland. And they prayed, they prayed on Tuesdays and they prayed on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They prayed from 10 o'clock at night to sometimes 3 and 4 in the morn. And after so long they got a vision that God had given them. After weeks of praying for revival they said the Lord is speaking to us to talk to our pastor now their pastor was a good man preached the word but they went to their pastor and they said pastor we believe that you and some of the deacons need to begin to pray with us and we've been praying on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and on Thursdays and so the pastor and the deacons began to pray along with these two older ladies and what a fascinating time it was as as the ladies played in the in the cottage and the pastor and the deacons they prayed in a barn <laughs> and oh they prayed that God would come down and one of the deacons began to hold on to the scripture from the book of Psalms that only those that would have clean hands and a pure heart would be able to ascend the holy hill of God and only then would God come down and bring the blessing oh I wish old Duncan had more time this morning but you need to study that it wasn't a blessing it was the blessing and they held on to that and they prayed and they prayed and soon the pastor and the deacons and the, the, the two older ladies 
days they said what we need to do is call in someone that would preach a special service for us maybe a series of services and so they knew their pastor was going to a convention in Edinburgh Scotland across the, 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 the channel and so he went to the convention and the conference and he asked around for different people and one man in particular he sought out that had been used of God in Edinburgh but that man was not available but he said why don't you try to talk to old Duncan Campbell <laughs> again yours truly and I said oh I am not sure that that I could do anything more than what they are doing they said they want someone to come and preach the Pentecostal word of God are you Pentecostal today uh, I'm, I'm sorry when you get old you get hard of hearing are you Pentecostal today I heard something when I came in that's better so I went for what they thought would be a 10, ten day series of meetings and we crossed the channel and it took us days to get to Bavis. It, it seemed as if the demons of hell were, were just thwarting our way. There were storms as we crossed the channel and then went overland in our journey to that little village. In fact, we arrived a little bit late that night. It was about a quarter to nine <laughs> to start the service. But there were some of the old farmers and the fishermen that joined. And we began the service and we had good worship. We had about 100 or 200 people packed in and people were believing and anticipating for God to do something. And I preached a word as best I could. I was younger in those days, by the way. But nothing glorious or out of the, the ordinary happened. And so I... As a smart, wise pastor said, nothing happening, let's close and let's leave. Even though it had been bathed with prayer. And so in those days, the, the, the deacons would sit on the platform with the pastor and the speaker, and then the pastor would come down and they would go out the center aisle with the deacons. And that one deacon that had called out to the Lord in the barn and had said, Lord, you promised those that have a clean hands and have pure hearts can ascend the holy hill. We have looked for you and we need you now in our community and he fell what we used to call it in the spirit right in the middle of the floor well everybody's eyes glanced at the man and I looked and I said oh I agree but it was just at that moment that the back doors of the church flung open and in came the local blacksmith now he had been in our service earlier that evening for sure yes and he says oh Duncan Campbell Duncan Campbell Reverend Campbell you must come see what's happening outside I said am I in trouble was I too loud were we, were we too exuberant and I didn't think we were too exuberant at all and he says you got to see what God is doing and we went to the door the pastor and I and we flung open the doors and we saw three four maybe five hundred people on the lawn of the church at a quarter to eleven at night they had been drawn like like a magnet had drawn them to that place some from the, the dance halls, some of the young people that hadn't attended church had grown up as little children, but after the war, they never went back to church. And they came from the dance halls and they were crying out. There was men from the tavern that had come. There was even some of the farmer and the fishermen that had dressed and gone out and said to their wives that there's something happening. And we can't explain it. So the pastor looks at me and he says, Duncan, what shall we do? I said, we'll invite them in. We'll have church again. We'll do a, a second part, an encore. Amen. 
maybe even take an offering. We love that. <laughs> well, we invited them in, and now the church is packed with, with some six to eight hundred children of God, people that God so cherished that he gave his only begotten son. And now we didn't even have to plead with them. They were running down the aisles, kneeling around the altars. I began to pray with one young lady. She, she was the school teacher, the school mom in the community. And I put my hands gently on her hand. And she's crying out, have mercy on me, God. Have mercy. I've done immoral things. I've sinned. And I, I softly said, my child, he hears your prayer. He's a merciful God. He's a forgiving God. And that night, she came back to Jesus. The deacons were busy as well. And the pastor, there was another man that was here. And he cried out and he said, Reverend Campbell, I'm the town drunk. I've boozed all my living away. My life has been shattered. And I prayed with him and I said, Dear God, man, God can forgive you. He can break loose those chains of alcoholism. And God did that night. So it wasn't until about four in the morning that we, we actually left the building and we went down the street just but a quarter of a mile and we ran into the local constable. Now he was a God-fearing man too. And he said, Duncan Campbell, come quick, come quick again. I thought I was in trouble. I wondered what I did. We went to the constable station and we found out there that there were people that were in wagons. People that had driven their cars some 12 and 14 miles through the country. Drawn by the Spirit of God. They didn't understand it. They couldn't explain it. They were talking amongst themselves at four and five o'clock in the morning. And they said, why are we here? All we know is that the spirit of the, the God seems like he was moving upon us. And we were able to go down to the constable's office and lead so many of them to the Lord. That was the start of revival. It wasn't a sermon. It wasn't a series of meetings. It was the divine spirit of God when God's people prayed. Oh, and by the way, Peggy and Christine's cottage was right next to the constable's office. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how our God works? And that was the start of three years of, of God moving in a powerful fashion upon people, upon those who God so desperately wanted to pull into himself. That's revival, people. When people fear God and when his spirit is able to move. That's what happened, continued for almost three years. And I was gloriously a part of that. Let me talk briefly. What's wrong with us today? What's wrong with the church in America? We're seeing things around the globe. But what's happening with the church? And I'm not talking specifically your church. I'm talking as the church of a whole. The church that believes in Jesus Christ as Savior and the Lord. And I hope you know him today as your Savior. If you do not, today is your day. He can have mercy upon your soul, upon your sins. But what's happened in the church today? We've got pretty, pretty little preachers in pretty little churches preaching pretty little sermonettes for pretty little church people. And God could care less about how pretty we are. He wants to see if we have clean hands and a pure heart. 
someone says, oh, well, you got to love the sinner and hate the sin. And I realize that sin is a, is a dirty work. I understand that. But it's about time we get our hands dirty. It's about time you and I begin to pray as Peggy and Christy. What's that an excuse? We're not blind. Like Peggy was, we're not crippled as bad as with arthritis as Christine. We have our aches and pains, but they still were able to pray for days and weeks and hours. And they brought revival to Lewis. And it was the great awakening of the Hebrides. We need revival again and we need to pray, God, do it. You say, oh, we've got to love the sinner and hate the sin. And I understand that. And we have to do that. But I must be honest today. I have so much sin in my life that it takes everything that I have to, to pray for me. Daily coming before the cross and saying, God, clean my hands and clean my heart. I don't have time to take care of your sin. You need to pray and forgive it for yourself. Amen. Have Jesus come and, and cleanse you. No offense. But what has happened to us? What has happened in, in our lives that is drawn to such this? I'm tired of praying and preaching and speaking on revival. We need to just practice the prayer for revival. If your church is not praying, shame on you. Corporate times of prayer. Oh, wait, I think... I think your dear pastor said that Wednesday nights you have devoted now to prayer. Hang on, my pastor and wife, because something happens when we pray, when he sees that we're honest. And I would hope that more people would show up to the prayer meeting than to the wiener roast. And I love the wiener roast. But when will that happen that we have more people come for prayer? Lord, I know you may not like what Duncan's saying today. And these may not be Duncan's words, but I think it's his heart. You may not invite me back, and that's fine. But you know it's the truth. You know that if God's people, which are called by his name, would humble themselves and seek his face and pray, then they would hear from heaven. What's happening in our land? What's happening with all that's taking place? It's about time we prayed a promise over our Bibles. Just as Christine and Peggy Smith did. They prayed over a Bible that the 45th president of the United States, your country, was given and was installed into office several years ago. Did you know that the Bible that Peggy and Christine, those two old women in Lewis, they prayed over and then they gave that Bible to their niece. Her name was Mary, Mary Smith. She moved from Scotland to New York City. And she met a man by the name of Franklin. And the two of them fell in love and they got married and they had five children. And one of their son's name was Donald. Donald Trump. He was the son of the niece of those two old ladies that played. Now, I'm not here to criticize or judge, to try to be so spiritual or not. All as I know is that God, by his providence, saw fit for that Bible to make its way from a revival across the ocean to our country and is now in a museum in Washington. Washington, D.C. on display. And I'm not saying that there's power in that Bible per se. There's power in what it says. There's power in the divine spirit of God that moved upon men of old to write those words. 
But I believe it could be symbolic for us that if we would cherish the old rugged cross, if we would cherish once again the word of God, what might he do in our day? Again, what's wrong with us? And I put myself in that boat. What's wrong with us? When God came down in his own personal spirit on the island of Lewis in the little community of Barvis, people responded to what he was saying to them. All as I want to do today is encourage you that we will only ascend the holy hill of God if we have clean hands and a pure heart. Only then God will rend from the heavens and come down as, as the, the prophet Isaiah says. Don't you desire that? Don't you desire that for your country? We live in a country and you live in a country. The Republicans hate the Democrats, and the Democrats hate the Republicans. We try to figure out what's going on, but the only cure and the only answer for our country is prayer and the Spirit of God. It's not some political movement. And you can get him upset with me if you want, but that's what God's Word says. It's not about the, the elephant of the Republican and the, the donkey of the Democrats. It's about the Lamb of the Cross. I belong to the Lamb, not the, the, the donkey or the elephant. I belong to the Lamb who was slain from the beginning and the foundation of the earth. Oh, I desire a revival. And all that revival would sweep our shores. Revival is what happened in Hebrides in 1949. And revival is what can happen again in our country, in the United States of America. Oh, dear God, rend the heavens and come down. Rend the heavens and come down. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? As we close this particular service, and we thank God for what he has done in our hearts and lives, what he has already done in our country and in our church. God, right now, by your spirit, speak to our hearts. If one of you is here and you do not know the Lord as your Savior, today is your day. Just say, now, Lord, come into my heart. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Maybe you've drifted away from him. Today is the day to come back to him and come back to his word. He desires that more than ever. Maybe you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The Hebrides revival was that. A Pentecostal move of God. A Pentecostal assurance that God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. That your young men would see visions and your old men would dream dreams. And I believe that that's still happening today. That He desires to use every one of us. And as a man of the 21st century now, Walter Smith speaking to you, my desire is each one of us get closer to the things of God. And what it takes is that we need to surrender. It's going to take us getting off of Netflix and allow a Christ fix in our life. We spend two hours watching a movie, but we spend less than two minutes with the Master. Something's wrong with us. Two hours watching a program on TV and less than two minutes praying to our precious Lord and Savior. I'd like you to stand with me today and we're going to make this our prayer before we leave today, before we ask our pastor to come back. But it says, I surrender all. And I think we all should know it. Beautiful song. Make it your prayer. Lift your